So back in chapter two, we saw a little bit about variable scope. So we were trying to keep in mind this idea that you need to declare a variable before you can start using it. Otherwise, your program doesn't really recognize what that variable is because it has that top-down approach with uh, code execution. So in addition to that, there's going to be a few other rules that we need to address about variable scope. Another rule to keep in mind is that the scope of variables is going to be limited to the block of declaration. Uh, so what this means is that, is that the scope begins at the line where that variable is declared and it ends at the closing brace of the block the variable is declared in. So we need to keep that in mind uh, because this also is going to apply to any of our if, else if, and else blocks. Uh, essentially what we're looking for is the pair of curly braces. So we see an opening curly brace, we look through the, the, the body or the, the block of code between those two curly braces, we see a variable declaration, so we go, okay, we know that it's going to be within the scope of that is uh, bound by those two curly braces, and then we're going to look for the closing curly brace because that's where its variable scope is going to end at. So the example that we have right here, we're creating a boolean, we're calling it need total, we're setting it to true, so that then when we come into this uh, this block of code right here for our if statement, we're going to say if need total. So since that's true, we're going to go ahead and execute the one line that we've put into that block of code. In this case, we're declaring a double called total, and we're setting it uh, initially to zero. And then outside of that block of code, we are going to try to use total right here. So we're saying total is used outside of the scope the variable is declared in. So because of that, uh, even though we're trying to use a variable that we technically declared earlier in our program, uh, this is not going to work because of the fact that we are now outside the scope that total was declared in. So our program essentially can no longer see that, uh, that total variable, or at least it can't see the declaration of it. So if we go ahead and put together this little bit of code, come over to NetBeans. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to be putting together a pretty abstract program. Uh, primarily, it's not really intended to work properly. So we're going to test out a couple of things that will break it. Uh, so because of that, uh, you don't necessarily need to try to follow along with putting this program together as well. Uh, this will primarily just be for the uh, conceptual explanation of everything that's going on. So we're going to go ahead and create a new Java application. We'll click Next. I'm going to call this one More Scope. And click Finish. So we'll go ahead and remove the extra comments just to clearly focus on what's going to be important here. And so right here, we'll go ahead and put in our Boolean. Need total, which is going to be equal to true. We'll then go ahead and put in our if statement. So we're going to say if need total. We'll go ahead and use that pair of curly braces to make sure that we can clearly distinguish where this block begins and ends. And right here, we're going to go ahead and do double total is equal to 0, 0.0. So we're just creating that variable and then initializing it to zero. And then right here, we're going to try to use it. So we're going to say total plus equals 100. And when we do this, we're going to see that we have an error in our program. So we check this error. It's going to tell us that we cannot find the symbol. In this case, the symbol is going to be the variable total. And it cannot, it can't figure out what that symbol is because uh, as far as this program is concerned, we never declared it. It doesn't see this declaration here because this is in a scope that ends right here at the end of this body, so with this closing curly brace. So what you would need to go ahead and do in order to fix this is just make sure that this declaration is outside the scope of this, uh, this if block. And as it turns out, if we do that, so we're going to go ahead and just take this line, we'll go ahead and copy it, we'll go ahead and place it right here. And so then if I do that, we can do another quick check to see what's going on now. And so now it's going to tell us that the variable total is already defined in our main method. So the reasoning here is that at this point, uh, while our programs cannot see a declaration that occurs uh, in some block of code that has terminated, so say something that's been uh, closed off already, um, the opposite is not necessarily the case. 
So the declaration that we have right here on line 12, this declaration will be able to see anything that is occurring outside of that block of code. So in a general sense, we can use the indentation right here to kind of help us keep track of what depth of scope we're at. So we can see the body of our main method, of our, uh, our, um, our class. So this whole body right here is indented over once. So that's kind of its own depth of scope. Inside of the main method, we move over once more. So we increase that depth another level. And then inside of this if statement, so this block right here, there's another indentation, so we increase that depth by another level. And so the way this is going to work is that if we have something that is uh, what I would describe as being deeper in our code, so the, the depth of the scope is uh, a little bit deeper, uh, that's not going to be visible to anything that is at a higher level. But for the opposite, if we have something that's at a higher level, that's going to be visible to anything that is at a a deeper or a lower level. So because of this, we want to go ahead and get rid of this declaration right here. So we're going to do something like this. And now, this declaration right here, this total that we have, that's visible to our variable right here. So this can go ahead and use it. And of course, it's going to be visible to the variable here. So since that's in this, the exact same scope, so we can still see it here. So of course, what this means is that if I wanted to, Maybe I want to go ahead and increment it by, let's say, 50 right here, and then increment it by 100 right there. And then if I went ahead and just printed this out to the console, we'll go ahead and just print out total, save that. And so what it's going to go ahead and do is we've declared it on line 8. We're using it by adding 50 to it on line 12. We're using it again by adding another 100 to it on line 15. And then we'll go ahead and print it on line 17. And so in all, one, uh, all four of these cases dealing with this variable total, uh, this declaration right here is visible to these three usages of it. So we're going to run that, and we see that we get that value 150. So this tells us a little bit about the fact that we need to make sure that the scope of our variables is at a high enough level. So typically you want to make sure that it's in the main method when this is the only method you're concerned with. Uh, rather than being in the scope of, say, one of these if blocks, uh, so that that way the entirety of your program can actually see that declaration. But there's also another case, kind of the opposite extreme, that we want to be careful about. So we want to make sure that we also minimize our variable scope to avoid certain kinds of programming errors. We want to try to improve readability and also improve maintainability. So when I talk about trying to avoid programming errors, uh, one of the primary issues we could run into if we don't minimize our variable scope is that we might have cases where we have very large programs and if we use the largest possible scope for our variable say like in this example right here i'm going to declare a variable that's actually in the scope of the body of the class rather than just the main method so eventually we're going to get to a point where we start adding more methods to our programs besides the main method and if i do this that means that count, that name for a variable, is uh, no longer usable anywhere else in my program. So I'm somewhat restricted on the names that I can use, for, uh, use for my variables uh, because of this problem. So ideally, to reduce the possibility of these naming collisions, I want to go ahead and declare this in the, uh, the minimal possible scope where I'm going to need it. And typically what that means is that you're going to declare it inside of a specific method where you intend to use it. So like in this case, we're going to assign a new value 10 to count inside of the main method. So ideally that should be where I declare it as well. So if we go ahead and take a look at this as well. So say right up here, we're going to declare our integer. Uh, I'll say now, eventually we'll address this private keyword, but one thing to note is that when you declare a variable, in the body of the class, you're going to need this private keyword. So we're going to say private int count equal to zero. So if I go ahead and put it right here, uh, that means that this is going to be accessible to the main method, the entire main method. And if I started adding additional methods to this, uh, something that we'll see a little bit later on, 
all of those methods would have access to it as well. But that's not really what I would want, considering the fact that count should be uh, contained within a particular method uh, somewhere in this program. So ideally, you'd rather just go ahead and put your count right here. You do something like this. And then we can go ahead and remove this declaration. And then later, when we want to actually use count, maybe you want to go ahead and just add 10 to it. We can just go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is going to wrap up everything about scope. So the general rule of thumb is uh, to typically just go ahead and declare all of your variables at the top of the main method until you get more comfortable with this idea of either declaring them, in some cases, declaring them in the body of your class. Uh, there will be rare instances where that's appropriate. or maybe declaring them somewhere a little bit later in the main method or possibly even within the uh, one of these if blocks. Again, there are also going to be rare instances where that's appropriate. Uh, but the most effective or the most general way that you could approach this is to just declare your variables at the top of the main method. So we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up here on variable scope. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the conditional operator.